In this video, I'm going to show you how to generate a random variable in Solidity. If you don't know me, I'm Julian and on my channel Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain development and how to find your first blockchain job. So here is my Solidity smart contract and I want to create a function that generates a random number. So let's do this. So we're going to name our function RandModulus. It's going to take a single argument that tells us what is the maximum random number that we want to generate. We're going to call this mode. That's external. It's a view function, read only, and it's return an integer. Okay, so how are we going to proceed? We need some source of randomness. So first there is the time at which we call this function. So that's now. Then there is the current difficulty of the blockchain. So that's block dot difficulty. And then there is the address of the sender of the transaction. So that's MSG sender. So we're going to combine all of this with ABI dot encode pact. So that's an obscure function that we don't use often, but this is very useful when we want to calculate a hash and we will calculate a hash. So KCHAC256, so this allows us to compute a hash with the KCHAC256 algorithm. And as an argument, it takes a byte and ABI encode pack produces a byte. So we're good on that. So we're going to have a hash but with our hash, we don't have an integer. We want an integer. So we can cast this hash into an integer with this. And after that, the problem is that our random number can be very small, very big, but we want it to be within a certain range defined by this variable. So we're going to use the modulo operator. So if you don't know what is the modulo operator, that's basically the remainder of a division. So for example, 10 uh, modulo 5 equals 0 because uh, that's uh, with, you can multiply 5 by 2 and this is equal to 2 or to 10. But if you do, for example, uh, 10 modulo 7, then that's going to be 3 because you can do 7 times 1. And after the remainder is three to reach 10. So that's how it works. So here I have my random number that is within a certain range. I want to return this. Uh, let me put a semicolon at the end. Oh, this is cut off on my screen. Here I have a typo. This is get shack without a C here. All right. So now I'm going to deploy my spot contract in Remix. And I'm going to try, I don't know, to generate a random number with a maximum of 10. So that's going to be generated in the range 0 to 9. So let's try this. 6, OK, 8, 4. Yeah, I keep clicking. Yeah, so you can see that it respects the range and this is random. So that's pretty cool. How about if we try with 100? Yeah, yeah, so it seems to be working. Yeah, that's super cool. Okay, so all of this is good, but the problem is that this way of generating a random number is not entirely safe because this is possible for miner to manipulate this variable here now and uh, block difficulty. So how can we solve this problem? Well, we can use the Oracle pattern. So we can import data from outside the blockchain in the blockchain, and this is this source of randomness is something that miners can control. So how could we do this? Well, we would define another spot contract. So uh, we call this Oracle. Um, then we need to um, to control, to restrict the access of this. So let's, uh, in a constructor, we're going to define an admin address. So admin equals the sender. The, the address that deployed this smart contract. Let's uh, define this above as a state variable. And after, we will create a function to send a number from outside the blockchain. So that will be our source of randomness. So we're going to 
call this, I don't know, a feed randomness. Uh, that's not a great name, but <laughs> I'm not really inspired. Um, so here that will be uh, my uh, rand. And this will be control only by the admin. So we want the sender here to be the admin. Okay. And just very simply, we will save uh, this number uh, and here. Let's create this as a state variable um, and we make it public. And so now uh, in my contract, what we would do, it would define uh, here a pointer to, to the Oracle and we're going to define a constructor with the address of the the oracle uh, oracle can call this oracle address make makes this public so we're going to instantiate here pointer to oracle like this oracle address okay and so after so here let's put everything on its own line because that's more readable okay okay, okay. Um, and so now what we could do is we call the oracle and we want to have the value of the random number so ran like this and so um, so now we have this unique source of randomness that is not controlled by a miner and that's really way more safe. Um, another thing you could do is implement a system of nonces. So you could here, you could uh, define an integer. Here you pass your nonce and every time you execute this function, uh, you increment the nonce. So that would mean here you will do it slightly differently. You will call this rand um, and then you will return rand. But the problem if you do this is that this actually modified the blockchain. So you cannot here have a view function anymore. It needs to be called uh, within a transaction. And when you call a transaction, then you cannot have the return value. So most likely if you do it that way, then that means that you will use this function internally. Uh, and then within another function, like, I don't know, foo, uh, then you will use your internal functions, ran, uh, ran modulus, I don't know, 10, and then use ran uh, however you want. And if you want to see some other really cool trick about solidity, I've actually have a full playlist about that. So I'll see you there.